In this video, we're going to be comparing this X uh, infrared, I to look at the label, camera against the FLIR C2 and the Top Don thermal imaging camera for your phone. This is part two. Gets interesting. So what do you do on a Friday night? Go out with your mates, clubbing, whatever, clubbing sales, that's what they do in Canada. Anyway, I finally worked out how to put this together. There is a, a QR code on this paper here which you can download the app, but you have to go to this X Infrared site to find out some instructions. But there wasn't any. Um, because I'm, I'm not really into this type of stuff, but I'll tell you in a minute what, what, it, what it really does. There's Chinese instructions here, and on the site it's very, very vague. And the only way I found out what this actually is for is by watching videos of other people doing it on YouTube, or with this thing. So that's the setup. You see you've got your little camera here, you've got a jumper lead that goes to this here, which is also a battery pack which goes to your camera, your smartphone. There you see, that's the image you get. Maybe you can see... Wait a minute. There. Okay, what's wrong with that, Mike? It's brilliant, isn't it? But what's that little gadget on the side? It's a laser pointer. I can I point it? Hello. And then it all started to become clear. I thought to myself, wait, hold on a minute. This isn't for, like, mechanical type use. It's more for hunting. The uh, LED, uh, the, the laser light, is supposed to spot an animal for a hunter with a telescope so you can shoot it. You'll see the aminal on here and then you'll press the button and point at it like a laser pointer, you know, like on a gun. And then your mate shoots it. What could be better than that? So... <clears throat> The screen on the back is okay, but there's some things I just can't get over. It's meant for long distances. It's not really made for focusing in at short distance. Well, it is, because you can actually adjust the focal length on this, the, 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 the um, focus, should I say. Adjust the focus on it, which is good because you can get a nice sharp image. That's good. But what I don't like is the screen is permanently on two times the size. It's twice the size. So you're not getting a realistic thing and a vision of what you're looking at, if you see what I mean. And you're constantly moving it all over. It's just too big. Again, the idea behind that is so you can get on there and zoom it in. Look at this. Keep zooming it in. What are we up to now? You can zoom it in. Oh, Jesus. You can zoom it in to 15 times. I mean, that's okay if you have a use for that. And that's it. For looking for animals and stuff like that, to shoot bears and whatever you are. I don't know what they shoot over here. I'm not into, I'm not into that at all. But <clears throat> you can see here I've, I've got the, the temperature readings on here. They're wholly inaccurate. They're not accurate at all. It's, more, it's mainly for looking at colours of stuff. Um, I've just done a little video of my um, transformer just to show you the, the colours and the temperature but it's not really all that accurate. I think I've got a picture on here of Deborah this morning when I was playing around with this and it was she was uh, 43 degrees touching undead I would have thought but a contrary to that she said she, no, she, she, she feels alright so anyway somebody's lying other things I don't like about it, um, like I say, apart from the instructions, there's got batteries in the handset here, in the handle, batteries in there. And there's a button at the front. Clicks it on and off. What the hell does it do? And there's a little scale up here with a hundred on it. I haven't, got, I haven't even worked out what that is yet. Um, 
other thing I didn't like about it was that when you went onto the app store and you downloaded it, the, the, the app, I downloaded it on Firefox and all these alerts came up saying, well, spyware and all this, that and the other, we'll stay away from that one. And I'm always wary of things that wants access to uh, features on your camera, but if you don't use the features like, um, I don't know we say, camera, video, and what was the other thing? Sound. Then it won't work. Uh, oh, spyware. Like this, come here. Like this feature, this feature's like this X3. What the hell does that do? I don't know. Um, you've got your camera and your movie thing you can do down here. What's that do? Oh, look, that can look at your images. Is that run there? Sorry about this. Hold on, I'm just making this up as I go along. Oh, we'll see. I think so. So, yeah, it's a nice piece of kit. Well, it's a nice piece of kit if you go hunting. But anyway, the retail price of this is 419 US dollars. Oh, 572 Canadian. That's a bit steep, isn't it? But if you go hunting and you're into these type of things, you can, you know, all well and good. Now, the good thing about this is uh, the camera is mounted kind of securely in this frame. I like that. But, if you're going to take this off, and I'll show you how you can use it in different fashions, um, it becomes a bit flimsy. Back soon. So, this is the actual camera. It's supposed to be the smallest thermal imaging camera ever made. Um, okay, I can understand that. And they've got a little lead here, so if you want to look at circuit boards and things like this, you can trace the image and have a look at stuff. Alright, what's that showing there? 30 degrees in my shop looking at my bench. I can quite categorically say it is not 30 degrees in here. It's more like 18. And there's so, a lot of messing around. You can flip the images, you can invert it, you can do all sorts of stuff. But you have to do it sort of manually in some cases. Like I say, there's, there's things on here that I just don't understand and I couldn't find any any information on it at all. I don't know. Is it a good thing? I don't know. I, I sort of want accuracy on temperatures. Otherwise there's no point. But if you're just looking for an animal in the woods and you're looking for its heat signature, brilliant. You know, that'll do the job. But for the price, I don't think it's worth it. Now... Here's another very interesting thing, because if you can remember, I've got a little top done as well. This little thing here. This is great. Right. So now we can go to thermal imaging with a top done. And we'll look at the set, we'll look at me. And I've come down to a, a 29 degrees on my, on my shirt here. Wow, that's not bad, is it? What a, what a big difference. And if we look at the, uh, my bench, yep. 18.3 so you can see it's wildly out this thing here is wildly out on temperatures but it does a good thing on the on the uh, colors and the nice thing about the top done is you can put it anywhere you want so i can the nice thing about the top done is that if i put it on backwards so my phone's upside down pointing that way at you and the thing is the image has corrected itself and it's nice the other one i had a bit of a mess about with it but I kind of like this. I kind of like the top down stuff. It's like plug and play. That's what we want. Not messing about with stuff. You download the app and away it goes. But and it's the top down's pretty self-explanatory. I like that. I'm not too keen on things that plug into your phone like this. And I'll tell you for the reason why. Like I've got a little cheap plastic cover on that came with the phone, but a lot of people have these shockproof covers and things like this well yeah I ain't got much of a chance to get anything that's going to connect properly here and, and this thing here although it's okay it's light as a feather now if you've got it plugged in and it's in a care plant a protected case which you should be if you're hunting because you might bump it onto a rock or something like that this has got no sort of mass against it. that It can easily fall out. That's what I'm trying to say. It's, it's so light it can fall out of your, your phone. And then you've lost it. And you've lost 
419 American dollars or 572 dollars? Crazy, isn't it? I'll put some links below so you can see what I'm talking about. But for me, for looking at temperatures of gearboxes, engines and things like that, to want an accurate temperature when a thermostat opens, it's, it's really important for me. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not life changing or anything like that. But if you if you're looking at a thermostat that opens at 88 and it's not up and it's saying oh it's a hundred you're gonna think oh that's kind of weird isn't it what's going on so I don't know now going back to thermal imaging cameras let me go back and have a look now at my oh what's it called FLIR in 2016 I bought this FLIR C2 uh, it was one of the most affordable thermal imaging cameras you could get at the time but it still cost me nine hundred and eighteen dollars almost a thousand dollars for this so I don't know have they come down in price I think so a little bit and they've got better quality because this was a pretty robust little camera I mean every man and his dogs borrowed it around here to have a look at the houses because you look at the houses you can see heat escaping or if you're inside or drafts and things like that it's great for doing that the image size is pretty small um, and it doesn't record video, it just takes stills, which is okay at the time, you know, it's quite a few years ago now. Um, but the downside of it is it's a rechargeable one. What's wrong with that? Well, after 2016, the battery's not going to last long, so every time I want to use this as a go to device, I have to charge it up overnight takes ages to charge it takes if you notice the lens it, it's a stereophonic lens well not stereophonic we've got two cameras in I don't know what I'm on about but it's got two cameras in and what it does is one takes a black and white image and one takes a thermal image and when you do a printout using their software you could get an image of both and then you could see what you're looking at in real time, in, in, like in a colour picture, or no, it was a black and white picture. Black and white picture was the original picture, and then you had the superimposed uh, thermal on, not on top, but to the side, so you could look and see what you were actually looking at, I suppose. But it was um, it was a good one, and the temperatures were very, very accurate. I, I'll have to admit that. But like I say now, with this type of camera here, just using uh, the, the battery out of the camera, then it's always running. What's battery life on them? I don't know. Ooh, quite a lot. I set off down here this morning and this was at uh, 56%. Now it's 36%. And this is what I was thinking about this. I thought, oh, if it's got batteries in here, that's going to make it last a lot longer. But I actually had it plugged in here and it sort of went down. So I don't know what the heck's going on with that. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see about that. But anyway, that was just a little interesting thing about this little tiny thing. Would I buy it? They sent me it. But would I buy it? No. No, I wouldn't buy it. No, uh, I don't think so. If if I was going to spend money, I'd get a, like that. I'd I'd buy a top done. But even then, I'm not sure if they. I'm not sure if they're even continuing this. It might be. It might be. But it was a good little camera. So there we go. I'll put some links below and I'll try and edit some pictures in that I took with these cameras. But like I, like I keep saying, that um, it's one of those tools that you'd like to have, but could you really shell out all that money for it? I don't know.